Shop and on MixLR.com backslash Wake Up Call DT. Proud to be here with you inside of the Cafe Kubal Studios, hanging out where sports meets that thing called life. And always happy to be here with you on Wake Up Call. Hope you're having yourself a fantastic day this morning and, and hopefully a great week overall. If you're not, we're going to make it better. If you are, we're, we're going to keep it rocking and rolling. So happy to be here with you. I had a fantastic night last night. I truly had a great time with the Liverpool Warriors football team. I want to thank them all. I had a wonderful time with all my guests, uh, Uriah Matthews, Shamir Bradwell, as well as, uh, as Vince McBride. I want to give a shout out and a thanks to Ian Herrera as well for being a part of the show. And of course, uh, we had Jacob Renaud and, and, uh, and, and definitely uh, just want to thank everyone that was a part of the broadcast yesterday. And just, I mean, a phenomenal, phenomenal time. And Jaden, want to give a big time shout out to Jaden as well and uh, Jaden Ford. So many thanks to all the guys, as well as head coach Joe Sindoni, who's the new head coach of Liverpool Warriors high school football team. So we had a really awesome time at Avicoli's. You can go and watch all of those. There's four features, four features. We split the show up into four pieces. So we have a broadcast with Uriah and Shamir. We have a broadcast with Jaden and Jacob. We have one with Ian and Vince. And then we have one with Coach Sindoni and myself. So make sure you check all those out. I'll be sharing those on our social media platforms as well. And you don't want to miss a moment of it. From Liverpool High School for the football team. So many awesome things. They're on YouTube.com backslash DT, And they're on Facebook.com backslash DT. So you can watch them right now. And then we're going to share them to our social media media again so we make sure that everybody gets an opportunity to see these awesome young men speak their minds on their upcoming season which I'm very very much excited about so a lot of great stuff coming up here on Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora and and stuff that we've done here on Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora this week as we are inside of the Cafe Kubal studios and of course we want to thank you for tuning in live with us every Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Eastern Time on YouTube.com, Facebook.com, and MixLR.com, all backslash Wake Up Call DT to make it easy for you. We're also on Facebook.com backslash Live Now DT, and you'll find us on the Wake Up Call DT.com homepage. So however you're connecting with the show, we thank you so much for being a part of it and hanging out with us where sports meets that thing called life on Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora. So, like I said, go and check out those uh, Liverpool specials. We had a great time, as always, at Avicoli's, and just a great experience. I want to thank John and the entire team over there for all the work that they do and everything that, uh, you know, th that doesn't always go noticed. I mean, they their attention to detail, John is very attentive to detail, and, and I want to thank all of the wonderful staff, everybody that helped out last night and that helps out every time that we're there. The staff at Avicoli's is truly amazing and incredible. And I really, you know, everything goes off without a hitch every time we're there, and that's thanks to them. So a big shout-out to the staff. Go out and see them today at Avicoli's on the corner of Route 57 and Wetzel Road in Liverpool, New York. Don't miss out on the opportunity to to have not only great food but great service and just great people around you. So head out to Avicoli's today. Let them know the wake-up call sent you, and much appreciation on that. So inside of these Cafe Kubal studios, as I was saying, Cafe Kubal located on the corner of Route 11 and Taft Road at Sweetheart Corners in their drive through location. You'll also find that's in North Syracuse. You'll also find them in 343 Fayette Street, their double-decker cafe out in Manlius, and their three locations in Syracuse on 3501 James Street, 324 West Water Street, and 401 South Salina Street. Make sure you head out there today. Let them know that Wake Up Call sent you their way. Much appreciation to all that. Supporting local is very important to me. That's why we work with incredible companies. And even the companies that have that international name, right? The Carvels and the Hondas and the Chick-fil-A's and whatnot. You know, those come and Hooters, the companies that I work with that have those names, they have really localized themselves into their community and become a part of their community, of our community. And I can't thank them enough for that. So there's a lot of great things going on. We have a lot of great stuff coming up here on today's show, but head out to Cafe Kubal, fill your cup up right, make sure you got what you need for your cup, and let's enjoy the show. So, Mon Paz Kettle Corn and Popcorn Factories, what's popping? First off, every 
first and third Wednesday of each month, we have AD and DT with Athletics Director Bob Beretta and myself, Dan Tortora, Bob of LeMoyne College, in our exclusive multimedia marketing partnership. LeMoyne and I are going to have a conversation that we're sharing with you today. Bob Beretta and I will be talking about the fact that the fall season is already approaching. We'll talk about how he spent his summer jumping into the fall and knowing that next week, about uh, pretty much a week from today, right, a week from a week from tomorrow, I should say, Thursday, August 25th, Lemoyne Dolphins men's and women's soccer will have a double header on campus. So there's a double header coming up already for Lemoyne men's and women's soccer. And we're going to be discussing that. We'll discuss the hiring of Yaro Zavislan, who had an exclusive with us last week, being hired as the interim women's soccer head coach at LeMoyne. And we'll talk about why that interim tag is there for that job with LeMoyne women's soccer. We'll also get into the men's soccer side of things and Tom Bonus and what him and his team did that was special going into this season to try and help them bond and build together. And we'll also give an update on reclassification and realignment as we have been the exclusive home to be the first to tell you that LeMoyne was looking at reclassifying and realigning and then following that up with numerous broadcasts with Bob Retta to give you updates since then. And we'll talk about some of those conferences once again that Bob brought up that make sense. The Metro Atlantic Athletic Conference, the MAC, as well as the Northeast Conference, the NEC and the America East. So we'll talk about that with Bob and more coming up momentarily in this edition of AD and DT. Then at 9.30 a.m. Eastern Time, we will have Mark Lukashevitz join the show after being added to the Syracuse Wall of Fame here this year of 2022, 20 years after he was a part of the Angels 2002 World Series Championship team. So we'll talk with Mark, and then we'll get into, as we always do in the second hour of every Wednesday broadcast, the Fantasy Football Power Hour, proudly presented by the Wildcat Sports Pub. We'll be there tonight live drafting with one of our leagues. We'll be there. we got a bunch of leagues that are going to be drafting over the next few weeks. Our first one at the Wildcat is tonight, August 17th. Very excited to be out there with the crew. Much shout out to everybody. So very excited to see you all and have some fun. And if you want to join our Fantasy Football League, send me an email to dtstays at gmail.com. We'll be doing our Fantasy Mock Draft 2.0 later on in the second hour of the show, where we will have a new video for you in that hour. So, with that being said, good morning to Mama, good morning to you, and let us take a step aside for a fast break. When we spin back around here on Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora, Bob Beretta joins me for LeMoyne Soccer to speak on the women's team, the men's team, speak on the fall as well as give an update on reclassification and realignment and what the timetable could be on making a decision. All that comes up right after this. Carvel DeWitt, it's what happy tastes like. Do you know why? Because we make ice cream. Creamy, rich, flavorful ice cream. Not yogurt or iced milk like some of our competitors. Ice cream, fresh by hand daily. For the calorie conscious, we have something new for you. Our new Carvelite. Same great flavor, creaminess, and texture of our regular ice cream with only 35 calories an ounce. So whether you want an ice cream cake, flying saucer, dasher, Carvelanche, hard or soft ice cream, we will satisfy your craving with our fresh, handmade, regular, or new Carvelite ice cream. Carvel DeWitt. It's what happy tastes like. Kefi Kabam offers same-day local delivery of our products, offering no delivery charge for Onondaga County. Shop KefiKabal.com for fresh roasted coffee beans, cold brew, travel mugs, and all your essential Kefi Kabal needs. Kefi Kabal, coffee for the soul. Wildcat Sports Pub in Camillus, New York, is located on 3680 Milton Avenue in the Home Depot Plaza. It is your family-friendly sports bar and restaurant. Folks, some sports bars aren't family-friendly. Some family-friendly restaurants are not sports bars. The Wildcat Sports Pub in Camillus, New York, is proud to be both. 
It is that marriage that you've been looking for for years. The Wildcat Sports Pub is your home base for your sports bar and restaurant needs, games for the kids, indoor and outdoor activities, and enough things on the menu to come back every single week and get to try something new. They're open Sundays from noon to 8 p.m., Monday through Wednesday, 11 a.m. to 11 p.m., and Thursday through Saturday from 11 a.m. to midnight. For reservations and party information, call 315 315- 487-2222 for the Wildcat family-friendly sports pub and restaurant. to this edition of AD and DT with Athletics Director Bob Beretta of Lemoyne College and myself, Dan Tortora, a.k.a. DT, here with you every Wednesday at 9 a.m. Eastern Time with Dolphin Time and every first and third Wednesday with AD and DT. So as always, Bob, how are you? I'm doing excellent, Dan. How about yourself? Doing very well. And we have a few things to talk about here today. and They're in connection to some of the things you've seen on AD and DT as well as on the Dolphin Dive. And last week on Dolphin Dive, we had the exclusive first conversation with Yaro Zavislan as he's accepted the job as the interim uh, head coach for the Lemoyne women's soccer team. And so when I had the opportunity to speak with him, we had an extensive conversation about why he's here, why he loves this community and really feels like he can build something here, and what he took through the process. So on the other side of it, you know, obviously you have a place in, in finding that right head coach. So what was it about Yaro that spoke to you? Yeah, well, thanks, Dan. I appreciate the opportunity to, to talk about Yarrow. We, we set out to, to try and find a great leader for our student-athletes. We wanted to uh, let our student-athletes know that we were trying to put them in the best position possible despite a challenging set of circumstances. And while we searched for someone that, that would uh, lead in a way that would provide them confidence, but more so a great role model and someone that could really help them get better every day from a technical side of things. And, you know, our search led us to, to Yaro and, and there was mutual interest. He's undeniably one of the uh, um, most highly respected people in the world of soccer in central New York. Got a tremendous resume, experienced a great deal of success, of success at Cornell at the highest level. Had a four-year stretch there that, that was amazing, yeah. and won an Ivy League championship. Went to the NCAA, so we knew that we found somebody who could really navigate a season really well. And certainly with his current responsibilities at Syracuse FC, we know that he relates to current student athletes in a way that made us feel really comfortable in turning the program over over to Yaro's leadership. And you put interim ahead of that, so you know, this kind of see where it goes basis. What did you discuss with Yaro about that interim status? So we did not make any promises. We The one promise that we made was that we were going to do a national search. So yeah. we will, we are we are committed to a national search that will begin uh, later this fall, late October, November timeframe, near the end of the season. Hopefully our team is playing for a championship and going to the NCAAs and it's an extended season. but. We're going to do a national search. We made no promises. We promised Yarrow that if things went well and, and he was interested in a long-term arrangement, that, that he would be a candidate for that role. But we're committed to, to doing a national search, to completing a national search, and, and we'll do so with due diligence, and we'll do so with a great deal of care. And, but hopefully we have great success, and Yarrow is interested and puts himself in a position to be strongly considered for the permanent role. We are hurling toward the fall season. It's yeah. it's it's on its way. I took a walk last week out in Manlius and there were leaves on the ground. I said, wait a minute. So I don't know what that tree was or what its decisions were, but it's still summer, so I want to remind those trees keep those leaves. Right. But what can you say about the upcoming fall season, what you're excited about? Yeah, really excited. You know, Dan, we, we have our student athletes for several of our fall teams back now, back to Lemoyne. We opened up our Soccer camps last week, Coach Yaro's team, the men's team under Tom Bonus. I know you're going to be speaking to Tom here. 
you know, he, he had a tremendous team bonding event where, where they went up to Golden Goal and, and worked with someone from, from West Point who is really well versed in the leadership and team bonding elements. So we're really excited about that program. Tom brought in some tremendous talent mm -hmm. and he feels really good about where they are. They played Siena in the scrimmage and defeated Siena one nothing over the weekend. So that really bodes well. For, for kind of uh, understanding our leadership and the voice and where that was and we, we have some, some really exciting talent injected into that program and some of our younger players have stepped forward. So uh, really thrilled with, with where that is positioned. We talked about women's soccer, Coach Yarrow and, and that transition and how that's going and the feedback from our young ladies in the program has been excellent. They're learning every day and, and Coach Yarrow has is, is really provided that that stability along with his coaching staff. I mean, he's done a, a great job adding some, some coaching talent. Yeah. Sean uh, Navison has done a great job for us keeping things together and, and being part of that program. And, and now our volleyball team under Beth Fabian's leadership, they started practice on Monday, able to duck my head in and watch a little bit of practice here yesterday and excited about the path ahead for the women's volleyball program. So those are really the three team sports we have the individual sport across country. It's it's a team sport, but more individuals. And they're reporting this week and beginning to ramp up their uh, seasons as well. Their, their training sessions, and we have our first home event set here on campus on Thursday, the 25th of August. We have a soccer doubleheader, and it's not a scrimmage or exhibition games. They're for real. So yeah. inviting all of our Dolphin family to come out and support Coach Bonus and, and Coach Yarrow as, as he begins his tenure as the Lamorne head coach on the women's side. Yeah, you know, it's, it's it's crazy to think this, but we're there, right? We're there, like you said, the doubleheader for men's and women's soccer. It's it's alive. It's here in August. It's been a beautiful summer. I think we've been spoiled here. Syracuse has had 80s and 90s, and so the sun has been shining a lot. It's funny how when summer ends, I always hear people go, you know, we didn't get enough sun. It rained a lot. It wasn't hot enough, and I'm like, I don't know if it rained three times in the last two months. On top of all of that, the fact that it has been so sunny, so beautiful. Like I said, I'm going to go, I, you know, I said I got to go down to Orlando, Florida, the second home of the show to cool down. Get some rain down there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so uh, hopefully rain stay at bay because when it gets hot down in Florida, it's a chance every day. But, I mean, it's it's been a phenomenal summer. And for you, you know, family-wise, personally, outside of, of just the realm of Lemoyne College, how has summer been? It's been great, Dan. It's been an opportunity to, to really focus and, and double down on some things uh, internally in the staff. We took a few days and in, in, in an off-site, although we stayed here on campus and really took a deep dive into our operations plan, which is our highest eight top priorities through the calendar year 2023 as, a, as an organization, making sure that we're aligned completely with, with the mission of the institution and how we can do better and what ways we can become more efficient. Yeah. We've had some great conversations with our with our head coaches uh, in, in terms, terms of, of progress, progress and growth. growth. And of course, we've continued the, the discussions with our ad hoc committee on athletics reclassification. We completed, this week we'll have completed 20 meetings with that committee. Our 20th meeting will be tomorrow, tomorrow morning on, on Thursday. So, you know, that, that has been a focus for not only the athletic department, but it's been a focus for our leadership and all of our key constituents on and off campus. And you bring it up. We've talked about it a lot here. We were the exclusive first place to hear about Lemoyne College, even considering reclassification and realignment. We've been your exclusive home for all of the countless updates that we've done to update us again as we are getting closer to a potential decision, what do we know at this point? Yeah, it's been a great process, Dan, and the one thing I'll say is this has been uh, an incredibly inclusive discernment process. This has not been a couple of meetings in a fait accompli and, and let's go Division One. I, I don't know where I, as I sit here now, I don't know that we have a decision. We don't have a decision. I know I know that we don't have a decision yet made. Uh, I, I, can, I can tell you that we've been very diligent in our efforts, very intentional in terms of being inclusive. We talked to presidents, we've talked to CFOs of other schools, of course we have an outside consultant that's helped, and then we've started our open for it. Uh, and we have had two so far, and the third will be on August 23rd, where we're talking to the community and listening to voices and, and answering questions and considering things from different angles from different people, and we'll continue that. We'll continue that for the better part of the month of August 
providing opportunities. I, I have two student athlete sessions established right now. We'll have two sessions with the parents of student athletes also established around the Labor Day time frame as we continue to, to listen and learn and gain some perspective from yeah. different stakeholders and then hopefully we'll be in a position to make a recommended recommendation to the Board of Trustees sometime in September and, and we'll see what the landscape looks like at that point in time and it changes every day. It has been quiet. We expected the, the national landscape to to hit a lull during the summer and it has, but we also believe that there'd be some activity that would resume once classes commenced yeah. for the fall semester and we believe that's the case. Yeah, and it's definitely been, and you can go back and watch on our YouTube channel, youtube.com backslash wake up call DT. We've done a lot of shows about realignment, realignment uh, even more so now than ever. And I actually put a map out there to show people where things are geographical ideas that I have that maybe conferences should consider and some things that make all the much sense, which means that they'll probably won't do it. <laughs> so you have gone through this process. How have the coaches responded to this? Because obviously you speak to the head of each team and those head coaches have opinions and thoughts. Mm -hmm. So what has that forum been like to get their feedback on a potential move to Division One? Yeah, it's been interesting, Dan. And we do, we want to gain perspectives from all areas, from our head coaches, and we don't want to just hear from the coaches that are in favor of such a move. We want to hear from those that might not be in favor so we can talk through any anxiety that they may be having or, or concerns about if we were to reclassify, what would that mean for their student athletes, their program, and, and personally themselves. So it's been interesting. We've, again, been very inclusive. So, some of the greatest attendance for these two open sessions have been with our athletic department staff members and our coaches so they've been very inclusive and I, we wanted them to voice their opinions and, and some are completely in favor of making a move to division one two years ago and and some are concerned a little hesitant of what the future may hold if we were to reclassify some of our programs have been exceedingly successful on the athletics field in terms of being able to compete for national championships and certainly conference championships and, and earning a way into the NCAA championships even if you don't win your conference championship, which is the great lure to Division II. It's the access to that NCAA championships piece. But, you know, we've asked our coaches to, to be open-minded, look at things holistically, and if we make this move, it's not a move solely for the athletic department. It's a move, and I've said this multiple times, it needs to be a strategic move holistically on behalf of the institution and, and really a main part of our growth strategy as a college where we could potentially use the uh, a New York marketplace, a New York metropolitan area as, as an area that we could gain a foothold and reestablish a Lemoyne foothold down in the tri-state area if we were so fortunate to gain an invitation to, to a conference where its members were based in that area. It would provide us that opportunity to tell our story to, an hour, to a region of the country right now that, that is fertile with both prospective students and student athletes, but also well, one alums. Whereas right now, you know, the league that we're competing doesn't offer all those same opportunities. So again, we'll see, we'll see the direction that we head, but, but we've been busy and, and we've been very diligent. We have not missed a week of these meetings. There have been two meetings every week since early June. Again, by the end of this week, we'll have concluded 20 of those meetings. And not to, mount, not to, um, mount, not to mention, I should say, the amount of open forums and open sessions. And now we'll, we'll start to expand that even. And expand it, but also target it. When I say expand it, expand it to different audiences. And, and I'll be very active here in the next couple of weeks talking to student athletes, current student athletes, parents of student athletes. And President Lemire, I believe, is going to have some open office hour sessions that will promote more one-on-one -on -one dialogue. And, and you and I have spoken about it, and you mentioned three conferences in the past that make sense, the Metro Atlantic Athletic Conference, the MAC, as well as the Northeast Conference, the NEC, and the America East. America East has gone through changes recently. The Northeast has gone through changes recently, and the Northeast is known for taking teams from the NE10. So how do those discussions come about, and do you get advantageous and reach out to them and say, hey, you know, we're going through this process, we'd like to just kind of gauge your interest, or do you finish the process and then go to them? 
because you obviously at Army for over three decades, you build a lot of those relationships. So do you try to kind of just dip your foot in the pool and say, hey, just so you know, this is what we're thinking? Right. You know, how do you how do you kind of attack that process? Or do they, you know, reach out to you and say, hey, are you thinking of this? Or we heard that you are. How does that work? Well, and that was some of the, um, how we utilized our consultant, Russell Wright, Clinch Consultant. So, yeah, he, he contacted me back around Christmas and said, we're hearing some rumblings that there's some conferences that would be interested in Lemoyne if, if you were to consider reclassifying Division One, Does Lemoyne have interest, interest in that? that? That really began all of this process for us and really made us look introspectively and say, hey, is this something that would make sense for the college from a growth strategy standpoint? Does it, does it align with our core mission, with our, with our values, with our guiding principles, all these kinds of things? Does it make sense? And so we've done some great reflection about where we are, yeah. where we are if we were to stay status quo. Uh, we explored the Division Three Avenue, and we've really kind of settled down looking at, at whether are we better in Division Two right now as a member of the Northeast Ten Conference, or would we position the school for long-term success in, in a more meaningful way if an opportunity came to join a Division One conference if that made sense for us. So our consultant, continues to have dialogue with conference commissioners throughout the country and certainly in the Northeast region. And, and I've had conversations with several conference commissioners and explained our process, our discernment process, how thorough we are and have been and how inclusive we've been and kind of what our timeline to get to an answer would be. So it's a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Yeah. You know, we, we have conversations directly. We have, we have conversations, conversations through our consultant. We have conversations with other people that are involved with the conferences, and you know, we'll, we'll see how it all plays out, how it unfolds over the next several weeks. We don't know for sure that those two conferences or those three conferences have interest in Lemoyne. We, we don't know at what level their interest lies, and that's what we're going to find out here in the next several weeks, and, and then we'll also find out what our leadership what direction our leadership wants to follow, you know, what which path we want to follow moving forward. So you've been transparent with them. It sounds like that they have a timeline, they have they know what you're going through and kind of the things that you're working on, you've allowed them to have the information, right? Better to have more information than you need than to not have enough. So you've at least put it out there that they know. Yeah, we have Dan and and our goal, the leadership of Lemoyne, the Board, Board of Trustees, trustees Bob Reclitus, the, the former board chair, Pete Delora, the current board chair, President Lemura, other senior leaders here on campus. Our goal was to put Lemoyne in a position to have the agency to make a decision. Yeah. Not, not to have a decision made for us. We wanted to be able to say, hey, we looked at this very closely and it just didn't make sense financially or it made sense from, from a growth factor for the institution. It made sense for our students. It made sense for our campus community. It made sense for our academic mission. It made sense for our student athletes to enhance their overall experience. It made sense from an engagement standpoint and admissions, enrollments, all these things to expand our footprint. You know, we, we want to have the agency to say yes or no to, the, to a, an invitation so that if we hear there is significant interest mm -hmm. and we determine that it's not a proper fit at this time. We have the agency to get word to those conferences and say, you know, we're going to take a step back here and, and we're going to hold serve, if you will, and, and remain as a member of the Northeast 10 Conference and a, and a proud member of Division Two. Or we will have the agency to get word out to the commissioners that we strongly uh, are considering it and would consider an invitation quite favorably if one were to be extended to us. Yeah, so it's the balance. It is it's, the balance. It's the balance. It's, it's the art of the dance. It's the so, prom. Yeah, it's yeah. the prom. It, it actually, it, it's prom at, <laughs> at, at, in an athletics world. Yeah, it's, and, you, and you look at, you know, dancing with the one that wants to dance with you is something that my good friend Floyd Little said to me. He said, there's a lot of pretty people at the dance, but you dance with the one that wants to dance with you as well that you want to dance with. So... We'll see 
what Lemoyne's doing. We know, thanks to Flipper, that dolphins can dance. Dolphins so can dance. They dance well. Yeah, so we'll see who you'll be dancing with coming up here in the not-too-distant future. With that being said, this is another edition of AD and DT with Athletics Director Bob Beretta of Lemoyne College. Myself, Dan Tortora, a.k.a. DT, here on a wake-up call. And you are listening and watching on YouTube.com, Facebook.com, and MixLR.com, all backslash Wake Up Call DT worldwide, to Dolphin Time every Wednesday at 9 a.m. We'll be back this coming week with Coach Bonus, Tom Bonus of the LeMoyne Dolphins men's soccer team to speak on how important it was to have that retreat, to have that team building, and to come into this season in a very unique and purposeful way. That'll be coming up here on Wake Up Call and Dolphin Dive next week. Until then, fins up. Fins up, Dan. Thanks very much. Appreciate it. Cafe Cabal offers same-day local delivery of our products, offering no delivery charge for Onondaga County. Shop CafeCabal.com for fresh roasted coffee beans, cold brew, travel mugs, and all your essential Cafe Cabal needs. Cafe Cabal, coffee for the soul. Ma and Pa's Kettle Corn and Popcorn Factory remind us that every day is worth celebrating. Find them at 201 Old 7th North Street in Liverpool, New York. Open Monday through Saturday in store and all the time online at maandpazpopcorn.com. Serving our Central New York community and beyond, you can order all throughout the country at maandpazpopcorn.com. And remember to get your tins, which have in-store half-price refills forever. Ma and Pa's Kettle Corn and Popcorn Factory available to you for fundraising and all of your events by calling 315-450-6272. That's 315-450-6272. Ma and Pa's Kettle Corn and Popcorn Factory. How corny are you? Witty Wicks Candles and Gift Shop, Township 5 Camillus, where you will find handcrafted all-natural soy wax candles over 60 cents to freshen up your home. We carry a wide range of locally made items, Salsa Cues, Syracuse Salt, and Chocolate Pizza Company, to name a few. Let our knowledgeable staff help choose unique gifts and keepsakes for any occasion. Gifts for family and friends, and maybe a little something for yourself. Woody Wicks Candles and Gift Shop, Township 5, Camillus. Welcome back here to Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora inside of the Cafe Kubal Studios, hanging out with you where sports meets that thing called life. And always appreciate having you here on Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora every Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Eastern Time, where sports meets life. And here inside of these Cafe Kubal Studios, important for me to remind you where you can get out to Cafe Kubal in our community. 
You can head out to Cafe Kubal on 3501 James Street, 324 West Water Street, and 401 South Salina Street in Syracuse. You can also head out to Manlius on 343 Fayette Street. You won't miss it. I call it the Manlius Welcome Center. It's right where all roads converge into Manlius. And you can also find them at their drive through location on the corner of Route 11 and Taft Road at Sweetheart Corners in North Syracuse. So, with that being said, always happy to be here with you inside of these Cafe Kubal studios and always happy to have Mark Lukashevitz here on the broadcast 20 years ago, believe it or not, with the Angels 2002, I can't believe it's been 20 years, but 20 years ago, World Series champion with the Angels and 20 years later, the Syracuse Wall of Fame does the right thing and puts a, a former Sky Chief in there into their Wall of Fame and I'm very excited to be speaking with him on the heels of being honored in the Syracuse Wall of Fame for his time with the Sky Chiefs as we welcome in Mark Lukashevitz on Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora. Mark, how you doing today? Dan, great to, to be with you today, and, and thank you for uh, making me feel old today, 20 years ago. <laughs> I can't believe it, but uh, it's all good. Good to, good to be on your show. Yeah, you know, and and I knew I knew as soon as I said it that that was going to be the first response, right? <laughs> you know, 20 years, but if it makes you feel any better... I graduated from Christian Brothers Academy in 2003, and they're like, oh, you have your 20-year anniversary next year. And I was like, wait a minute. I just had my 10-year anniversary. I don't feel that old, and I don't, like, it. to me, it's like, it's weird for, like, 36-year-old me to be like, yeah, I have a 20-year anniversary coming up. So I, I can honestly tell you that I, I just think the math is wrong, Mark. You and I are as young as we want to be. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So, you know, coming on the heels of this Syracuse Wall of Fame honor, bring me into it and just kind of what, how you found out and, and just went into honoring you because I would love to share the background of you being asked to be a part of the Wall of Fame. Yeah, it's, um, you know, obviously I've, I've been a part of many Wall of Fames in the past. Uh, you know, Jason Smorrell, even back when Tex Simone was running things, they've always asked me to, to be a part of the Wall of Fames. And, you know, being being in, in playing for the Chiefs for so long, I'd be more than happy to, to be a part of it. I've spoken to, at some of these events, I've actually introduced Chad Matola, a former Chief, many years ago. I actually introduced him into the Hall of Fame a number of years ago. Uh, so I've always been around it. So so, you know, to get the call, Jason Schmoll called me in the fall of last year and, and told me that I was going to be inducted this year. And I was just super excited. Uh, I mean, a big part of my career was playing in Syracuse, uh, whether it's uh, playing baseball, broadcasting. Uh, so just to be able to get that call and just to be a part of uh, Syracuse baseball history with so many great people, players, broadcasters, people that have done so much in the community. Uh, it was really, truly an honor. You know, and you said you've been a part of them before and you've been asked to speak and, and to be around. So how how special was that where it was, you know, you go from being a part of the ceremony, being a speaker at the ceremony, having a place in it to then being the person in the spotlight, the transition of that? It was a little different. You know, like I said, I, I've always been used to speaking on other people's behalf. Uh, so the fact that today was, uh, you know, Jason even told me, he goes, when I got there that morning, he said, this is, today is all about you and enjoy the moment. Uh, so to be able to go up there on stage and have all my friends and family there, it was, uh, it was, it was kind of neat. It was really exciting and something I'll never forget. Mark, what, what about the wall of fame? Do you feel, I mean, do, do you ever feel, I don't want to say deserving, but I mean, is I mean, how do you take how do you take something like that in? Do you ever think about it? Do you ever walk by it and say, you know, when you were a part of these events, oh, I hope that I get to be a part of of this someday? Were you hoping for the call? What did it surprise you? How how do you react to something like that? Yeah, it's it's not really something you think about, especially when you're you're playing in the minor leagues. I mean, it's uh, you know, it's, I guess it's not one of your things. Hey, I hope I'm in the fall Hall of Fame, but. Uh, I think just being in the Syracuse community for so many years, playing for the Chiefs for four and a half years and doing time with broadcasting. And, you know, I never realized that, hey, maybe 20 years later, I'll be inducted into the Hall of Fame for Syracuse. But um, again, this is such a big part of my my career. Um, and I'm just thrilled to be a part of it and be recognized for it in a, in a place of Syracuse history, baseball. 
you know, you you said you spent four years with the the Syracuse uh, Sky Chiefs and in, in connecting with this this AAA baseball club here with Mark Lukashevitz, a World Series champion with the Angels in 2002, and, and having spent time with the Sky Chiefs. What are your memories with Syracuse in this AAA program? Uh, I mean, honestly, you know, I said it in my speech uh, at the induction. My first year with the Chiefs was 1997, the first year of the new stadium. Um, and we didn't have a very good team in 97. We were dead in last place, and I got called up from Double A, and everybody wanted to go home at that point. It was late in the summer. Everybody was miserable. Uh, and I'm like, oh, man, I'm like, I want to go back down to Double A. <laughs> everybody was excited. I think, I think we were in first place in Double A. But, you know, obviously, you know, getting excited to get called up to Triple A, it was the next step uh, to my journey to the big leagues. Um, but really – what sticks out most is the amount of great players that I was fortunate enough to play with in Syracuse. When you talk about some of the names, Roy Halladay, Chris Carpenter, Kelvin Escobar, Jose Cruz Jr. I mean, the list goes on and on. Uh, people don't realize how many great players have come through Syracuse over the years. Yeah, and, and Mark, you know, you bring that up, you know, how quickly uh, things can change. And right, you know, somebody that you come and see for – a few bucks and you know a dollar hot dog and whatnot and then that person turns around and is up in in the big leagues uh you know we we've seen it with the Syracuse Mets which the Sky Chiefs have you know morphed into over these last couple of years uh, we just we just saw that recently with a couple guys getting called up including uh, one of the guys that uh has a connection to one of my friends down in Texas so you know it, it is an it, it's an instant moment where you're playing, and, and I said that, my buddy sent a message to me, and I was like, I just saw this guy come up to bat on Sunday, and then he gets called up on, on a Tuesday, and it's that quick. You, being somebody that's gone through that process, bring me into what that's like, right? To be in AAA, and to be playing in front of maybe a couple thousand fans, and and out there doing your thing, and then all of a sudden to get that call, and, and here you are in the spotlight, in a totally different world, but it's it, it's this immediate thing. You wait your whole life for it, and then it can happen in just a couple of days. It is really an emotional roller coaster. I mean, there's a lot of highs and lows, but as you play this game at the professional level in the minor leagues and the big leagues, there's a lot of moving around. I mean, I've been moved around so many times in my career, um, and then sometimes it gets very frustrating, especially for players that have families that travel with them with kids. You know, I didn't have that when I was playing, but you know, it's, you know, at the end of the day, uh, no matter where you go, you have to kind of just stay focused. And once you get on the field, these guys are professional baseball players. So once they get on the field, they feel at home. They feel right where they belong, whether it's in the minor leagues, the big leagues. This is their job. They know what to do. Uh, but, you know, it, it is. It's kind of crazy. I mean, <laughs> like you said, one day you're in AAA, next day you're, you're pitching at Citibank Field uh, in front of 50,000 people. Uh, so it's, it's a whirlwind. It's a lot of emotions, but it, it's great memories. How when, when you went through that personally, how did you deal with that? You know, like how did you go through the process of, I hope I get called, because everybody wants to get called up, obviously. But when you got the news that you were getting called up and getting an opportunity to play in the majors, can you bring me back to that moment? Oh, I, I remember vividly. We were actually, I was playing for the Angels AAA in uh, Salt Lake City, and we were on a road trip. I didn't make the team out of, out of camp. I was like the, the first, uh, the last player um, to be cut uh, off the big league roster out of spring training. So I went down to AAA, and our first road trip was in New Orleans. And my head coach at the time, Mick, Mickey Tettle, um, um, Gary Matthews, he called me at like 2 in the morning. Uh, we just played a night game. I'm sleeping in my hotel room. He calls me at 2 in the morning and, and says, uh, he goes, hey, you got a flight at 6 o'clock in the morning. You're going to Detroit against the Tigers. You're going to the big leagues. Um, <laughs> so uh, at first, I'm like, am I dreaming? Like, I, I just woke up. Maybe this is not real. So I had to get up and process it for a few minutes. And, um, you know, I flew to, I think I had like three layovers and finally got to Detroit that day. And, as soon as I got there, the Angels were playing the Tigers in extra innings. Uh, I think it was like the 11th or 12th inning. And as soon as I got there, they said, hey, get your uniform and get down to the bullpen because we're running out of pitching. You might go in the game, <laughs> so, uh, which I did. I actually went in the game in extra innings. Uh, we wound up losing, but I didn't have a whole lot of time to, to soak it in. 
I had to get a uniform on and get ready to pitch. Yeah, you know, and 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 that for you, I mean, staying loose, staying ready. What what do you do? And I mean, obviously, you have to learn on the fly. But how quickly did you learn that getting called up to a team and being there and traveling there and getting that flight and then finally, you know, being being there at the game itself that they could say to you a few hours later, oh, congratulations for being a part of the team. You got to go in in the next inning. I mean, how how do you adjust to something like that? It's, you know, it's it takes a little time. But I think, like I said earlier, uh, when you play at that level, um, you just have to, to learn and, and deal with adjustments. I mean, we all talk about it all the time. Baseball is a game of diversity. A lot of highs and lows, ups and downs. You're going to fail more than you succeed. So I think just playing the game for so long and just being able, learning to be able to adjust to things like that, I think it really does help you in those situations where, you know, it's a roller coaster where you're getting bounced around. So I, I think, you know, in general, uh, just playing baseball and dealing with that over the years really helps you in those situations. Speaking here with World Series champion and now a member of the Syracuse Wall of Fame, Mark Lukashevitz here on Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora inside of the Cafe Kubal Studios. You stand up there, you make your speech for the Syracuse Wall of Fame. Was there anything that when you stepped away from the podium, because I think about this and, you know, I've, I've been a keynote speaker, I've gone up and spoken to classes and whatnot. You want to, it's not about, well, for me, it's not about, it's not about me. It's about how can I affect somebody positively in that room at that moment. Do you yeah. feel like there was something in your speech when you stepped away from the podium and let go of having your hands on it that you left somebody with something? Was was there something you wanted to make sure you said or you got to that once you said it, you said, okay, I think that this is the thing that I wanted to get out and now I can step away from the podium? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's a great question and uh, you're absolutely right. There was, a, I mean, there was so many people to thank throughout my career, but, you know, playing in Syracuse, there were so many people I wanted to recognize that have uh, helped me with my journey and just my career in the Syracuse area, just playing with the Chiefs. There were so many people I wanted to thank uh, that have helped me. Uh, obviously, you know, Tech Simone was a huge uh, part of my career up here. He, you know, I made a joke in the speech where, you know, during the offseason, I lived in Syracuse and I'm looking for a job and and he said, hey, well, I don't have a job for you, but you can come paint my house. <laughs> so uh, I painted Tech's house for two weeks and, you know, every day we'd sit down for lunch on a break and he'd talk to me about the history of Syracuse baseball, uh, things like that. But um, again, so many and really the fans, too. I mean, the fans of Syracuse have been great over the years i mean till this day when i go grocery shopping or i'm at the mall i'm always running into somebody that hey i remember when you played for the chiefs or they just want to talk about baseball uh so just things like that i really appreciate and, and really to have my to have my family and my kids there you know my kids didn't watch me play i had kids later in my career uh so they never really got to experience me playing um you know like most kids they think their dad is kind of boring and you know uh they're used to me just yelling at them hey go clean your room so when they are able to be a part of uh an event like that uh it's really special for me and you know they're like hey dad you actually were cool at one point so uh, <laughs> so you know it gives me some street credibility with my kids i guess yeah you know and i i find that interesting with literally any walk of life like if 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 you're in the world of entertainment and I consider sports to be a part of that, that, you know, people always talk about your kids are so used to it and they don't they don't see it or maybe understand it. So how has that been maybe unique for you that, like you said, your kids kind of look at you and, and they didn't, you know, they didn't get to see you play. You had kids later in life. So now that they've gotten to experience this and experience the Wall of Fame and experience you being up there and being honored. What was the, the drive home like, so to speak? Well, I, I think now that they're getting older, uh, they're, you know, teenagers and they're starting to understand, hey, you know, maybe, you know, dad's right on some of these things <laughs> that I've been, he's been trying to tell me about uh, with baseball and things like that. So I think events like this, obviously, they, they came out to Anaheim when we had a 10-year reunion for one of the World Series with the Angels. I was fortunate enough to bring them out there and, and to experience that. So just events like this have been really cool to share it with my kids. 
Um, and again, I think just them getting older, I mean, they're, they're asking me all these questions now, Hey dad, you know, what about this? Or when you played and when you did this and that, so you're starting to see them get more engaged as they get older and starting to want to learn more about my, my previous career. And, you know, you having that, being a part of the Sky Chiefs and, you know, it was a Syracuse Chiefs, the Syracuse Sky Chiefs. There was a time in history where they were connected to the Yankees, connected to the Nationals, connected to the Blue Jays. Now it's the Syracuse Mets and obviously connected to the New York Mets. When when you see these different iterations and evolution of the Syracuse AAA team, what do you believe has remained the same about Syracuse AAA baseball? Well, I, um, you know, it's funny because I still don't know what a Sky Chief is. I'm still trying to figure that out. Me too. <laughs> so, Me too. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, you know, when you – I went when I went to the stadium uh, this past weekend, I'm amazed that every time I go there now and when they did the huge $25 million renovation, uh, anybody listening, if you haven't been to the stadium recently, I highly suggest you go check it out because it's, it's one of the nicest stadiums in minor league baseball. Yeah. Uh, it's absolutely beautiful. They did a great job. And the fact that they're affiliated with the Mets, I think, is phenomenal. A lot of people identify with with New York teams. So having the Mets here, uh, and they're going to be here for a long time. They signed a long-term agreement. Uh, I think it's great. I mean, you see so many young kids wearing Mets hats in the stands. Uh, I think they've done a phenomenal job. I think Jason Smorrell has done a phenomenal job promoting uh, keep the team, um, and it's just it's an exciting place to be. I mean, it's a it's a great atmosphere, a great night of entertainment for for fans. Yeah, you know, and 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 I thought the same thing. I mean, going into the stadium, I went with my dad on this uh, a week uh, this past Thursday, and I never I, I haven't been with him in a very long time. And I sat down with him, and I I said to my dad, well, first and foremost, my grandfather was there in spirit because his favorite number is thirteen, mine's twenty one. And so 213 shows up a lot with us, and my dad hands me the ticket because we went with uh, with my church, and there was like 60 of us in the church. And so my dad hands the ticket to me because he picked him up, and the ticket, I looked down at it, I said, get out of here. It's the first thing I saw. We were sitting in section 213. Yeah. And, That's pretty cool. Yeah, and so, and so we sat down, and... I just looked around the stadium and I said to my dad, I was like, this is because I, I mean, my dad and I used to go to MacArthur and yeah. and I said to him, I was like, this is a beautiful, like a genuinely beautiful ballpark that is is very I mean, it, it makes you feel like there is a major league, you know, air to it. There's this professionalism to it. There's there's a heightened, you know, piece of it. And, and I. I just kind of sat in awe on a perfectly sunny day saying to myself, like, we have this golden nugget right here in Syracuse, and I really hope that people take advantage of it. Yeah, I mean, it's um, it's a beautiful, I mean, it's a big league atmosphere when you go there. Um, and you talked earlier about the players. Syracuse right now, the Mets have some of the top minor league players playing right here in Syracuse in all of minor league baseball. One just got called up to the Mets, Maddie. Uh, we have Alvarez as a catcher. I mean, you have some big name players playing in Syracuse right now. Yeah, you know, and 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 uh, the one that I mentioned before, Beatty, that just got called up, uh, having a connection to him. I got a message when I was out at the game from one of my friends, uh, Debbie, and she was like, "You gotta, you gotta say hi to uh, to Brett Beatty for us and, and cheer him on because he's a friend of the family." And then literally, like the next, I think it was two days later, forty eight hours that he got called up. So it's really an amazing thing. I mean, Mark, for you, like you talked about the pitchers that have come through and, and you coming through the Sky Chiefs, Jacob DeGrom just came here recently. I'd love to get your thoughts on DeGrom. Uh, I mean, what, what, what else can you say about Jason DeGrom? I mean, he's one of the best pitchers in the game of baseball. I mean, the guy's just electric uh, when he goes out there. I mean, I love watching him on the TV. Um, you know, he's just He's a special player. Uh, one of you know, not many players come along like that with his kind of talent. So just to watch him on the mound and watch him in Syracuse again, uh, it's just the the opportunity that we have here in Syracuse to be able to watch, you know, one of the base, best pitchers in the game pitching right here in Syracuse. So uh, the guy's just amazing. Uh, I love watching him. I love I love the Mets 
you know, big league team right now. I think they, <laughs> they are they are in poise for, for playoffs. They have a great team. They have a great manager. Uh, I thought hiring Buck Shaw Walter was a, was a great move on their part. Um, I just like the way the chemistry on the team is and how they're going. Yeah, and there's a lot more to come and a lot more to come with Mark Lukashevitz here on Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora, so make sure you stay tuned in the coming weeks. Mark, a final note here, just what you'd like to say to those people out there in single A, double A, triple A, wherever they are in the country that are fighting and pushing and praying for an opportunity, sleeping in an apartment that's not great, maybe renting a room in somebody's house trying to make money, working another job, maybe getting yelled at by their family that like, hey, you got to hang it up because it's not paying the bills type of thing. It's not a luxurious road to go through the farm system of baseball, but it can be a very, very fruitful road. So what would be your advice? Well, I would, I would tell any player, if you love the game and you love playing, you know, keep, keep going after your dream. Um, you know, the, that's the most important thing. And I even tell young kids when they play, you got to love the game to play it because there's so much failure in this game. There's so many ups and downs. You have to love the game uh, to continue to try to get better and, and just work hard. And there's going to be a ton of ups and downs. And, you know, I, I remember Tex Simone telling me a story when Ron Guidry played in Syracuse and, you know, he didn't get to the big leagues yet, but he was kind of struggling and missed home. And he was thinking about packing it in. And Texas kind of talking him out of it in the parking lot. So, <laughs> and he's Ron Guidry, you know. So you never know where this game's going to take you. Uh, you just got to put your head down, keep working hard, and you know, obviously there's some luck involved too. You got to be at the right place at the right time. But if you really love this game, uh, keep working hard. You're going to have a lot of doubters, uh, really, and in, in life and whatever you do. But if you believe in yourself and you love playing, you know, keep keep going after your dream. That coming from Mark Lukashevitz here on Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora inside of the Cafe Kubal Studios. Mark, as always, I appreciate the time, and the more we talk, the more I just want to like let you have the spotlight and just keep you on the show the whole time. So we'll, fi- <laughs> we'll figure something out, but I want to say thank you uh, above all things that you know years ago when we crossed paths and had the opportunity to speak with each other, you have never uh, treated me with any type of ego, you know, you know, it's, there's no like World Series air around you or anything like that. You were always welcoming, always great to to answer my call, answer my text, and have always been a very kind and and humble person who has made time for the show and made time for me. So beyond all things that you've done on the mound, I want to say thank you for the type of human being that you've been to me. Oh, I appreciate it, Dan. You uh, you've always been great to me, and uh, you, you do a great job uh, with your show. And I, you know, I love talking baseball, and I love talking baseball to people who appreciate the game and respect it, and obviously you do, and uh, it's a pleasure talking to you, so I appreciate having on your show. Absolutely. So listen, have yourself a great day. I know you just dropped off a kid at college, so yep. I know uh, I know it's it's going to be a little bit interesting in the household, but I, uh, I definitely uh, hope you have a great rest of this summertime, but you and I will be talking very soon, and, and I look forward to what we're going to be able to do together and i thank you as always sounds good dan looking forward to it all right take care take care see you later that coming from mark lukashevitz one more time on wake up call with dan tortora where sports truly meets that thing called life and i can't thank mark enough you know it's 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 definitely definitely awesome and uh to have him on the show and he has he's he's been incredibly humble incredibly kind i've i've john i mean honestly if you didn't know he won a world series he wouldn't sit there and tell you and and i love that you know those are the people that you want to have on the show the most those are the people you want to talk with those are the people you want to promote are the people that aren't there saying you know look how great i am you know they 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 say that if if you're a good person you shouldn't have to tell the world right how you treat people should tell the world and you know and you really don't care if the world knows or doesn't know, because that's not what your concern is, right? And and so, you know, I, I just, to have him be honored and have him be a part of the Wall of Fame and to have had him in Syracuse and to have him in Syracuse still, you know, this this is a, a beautiful thing. And, and that's the thing that I think people need to understand about this this wonderful city that I call home, that I was born in and raised in and came back to and built a company in, is that Syracuse not only has these incredible people, but they come back 
right? He was he was on the other side of the country. I mean, they come back. They come home and they build a home here. Whether they were born here or whether this was home at some point, people come back to Syracuse. You know, Gene Waldron is here. Mark Lukashevitz is here. You know, uh, you know, there's there's so many people. The Benettis are here that, you know, Rob Drummond, Rob Drummond played, you know, all over Canada, played in the NFL, and he's here. There's there's people that just they come home. Dale Shackelford was here for a long time before he moved down to Florida. And, and obviously he was born in Utica. So there's there's just this wonderful you know, where are these guys now? Arthur Jones, Super Bowl champion. He's back here. They come back, right? And and they build a life here. They build a life in Syracuse. They build a life in Central and upstate New York. And and if, if we can just continue to spread that message, right, to spread how beautiful our community is, how fruitful our community is, how kind and compassionate our community is, how, how blue collar we are, you know, it's like, there, to me, there's there's nothing like Syracuse. There is no equal to Syracuse. There's a reason why I came back. I was living in Florida, working at an ESPN affiliate in Orlando, going to Jaguars games and Tampa Bay Ray games and Bucks games and working at Disney, right? And I could go to Disney any day I wanted, and, and, and I'm down there with the palm trees and the heat and, and having a good time. And people said, why did you come back? And I'll never forget the day I sat in my car. I'll never forget the day I sat in my car. And I thought about what am I going to do next? And I couldn't cry. I was so ups- I was I was in a I was in a in a in a place where I I didn't even have tears. But I was at a crossroads in my life. And I had said to God, I said, you know, they say not to ask you for things. And I know, I know that, you know, that I shouldn't do this. And, 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 and if you don't want me to do this, then it's fine. But I said, God, I just need to see a sign. Can you just show me a sign? I, I mean, can you just have like a shooting star go over my head? Like something just happened. And I looked up in the sky and there was nothing there. And something told me change where you're looking. And I looked, I looked up in a different place. And I kid you not, this green shooting star, just like stripe just went over my right in front like right over my head and i remember going okay okay and i knew what to do then i knew to come home i knew to come home but people used to ask me why i came home they don't ask me anymore but it was why would you leave why would you leave florida why would you leave the heat why would you leave disney why would you leave paradise to come back here and i said because there's no place i would rather put my name on the door than in syracuse and central in upstate New York. There's no place that I would rather do that. And I say Syracuse Central, upstate New York, because I'm a proud Central New Yorker. I'm a proud upstate New Yorker, and I'm a proud Syracusean. And it's all the same to me. It's all the same. And it's and it's so meaningful that my company celebrated their 10-year anniversary, our 10-year anniversary this year. This year. You know, 10 years. 10 years after I decided to come back and I worked for a boss that didn't appreciate what I did, and I did everything I was supposed to do, and then some, and I wasn't given respect, and and I was lied to, and I was at 26 years old, and I said, where do I go from here? And I made a decision to start a company and, and to go online at a time where it wasn't smart to people to go online. It wasn't smart to leave traditional radio. It wasn't understood. It didn't make sense to people. They thought it would fail. They thought it wouldn't work. They thought maybe the model didn't even make sense. People would always say, how are you doing what you're doing? And here we are 10 years later, still doing it. And hopefully affecting you in a positive way. Hopefully giving you something to be excited about and be happy about. And and look forward to every Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. You know, when we come out and we see you, like we did last night at Avicoli's. I don't do this for the fame, and I don't do it for millions of dollars. I do it because I genuinely am in love with what I do. I'm in love with what I do, and and God is literally standing by my side at, at all times, holding my hand. And I'm like, where do you want to go? And he's like, let's, you know, you tell me. Sometimes he looks at me and goes, I trust you. You tell me where to go. And sometimes he goes, hey, follow me, you know. But we work together, and 
you get to meet these incredibly awesome people. It's really awesome people like Mark Lukashevitz. And it's, I'm 36 years old. I'm a kid, right? I'm a kid. And to think of everything that I have had as a blessing in my life and to know that to me, I'm just getting started. To me, I'm just getting my feet wet. You might think I'm fully in the pool and I'm like, I just dunk my toe in, you know, and I'm, and I'm, you know, I'm ready to go and do these things and, and make these positive changes. I love you, Syracuse. I love you, Central and Upstate New York. And, and, and you should know that. And I want you to know that. I love you. And I came home because I wanted to. I came home because it was the move that, that I felt that I should make. And if I didn't make this move, I wouldn't have gotten to spend time with my, my Gammy Miller, who just had her 10-year anniversary of, I call it the celebration day, right? Because they wouldn't want me to be sad, of the day she passed. Celebrate. To know that I got to come home and I got to see her. And I got to come home and, and I lived with my other grandma, G-Mama, and I took care of her. And she took care of me still. I would say when I lived with her to take care of her, she took care of me more than I took care of her still in her 90s. And not because I can't take care of myself, just saying her love and her compassion and her beauty and her grace and her just incredibly beautiful soul, just bright, shining soul. I mean, she always was a nurturer and she still is from heaven and she will continue to be. And, you know, I wouldn't have had that time with both of my grandmothers. I wouldn't have had that time. I wouldn't have found my dog. I wouldn't have found Lily. And, you know, Syracuse just, it gave so much to me as a kid, and it continues to give to me as an adult. And you go through adversity, and you think, do I want to stay here? Do I want to do this? But you cannot connect that to where you are, right? People do things, but where you are, your home should be wherever you are. And, and Florida is home and Pennsylvania is home. And I love, I love those places. But there's nothing like Syracuse. And there's nothing, there's nothing like landing here and walking through the airport and smiling and saying, like, I am so proud of myself and what I've done here. Like, I'm happy to be me and I'm happy this is my home. So if you're not there, I hope you get there. I hope you get to a place where you love yourself so much that you just silently think it and smile it and go help somebody else. Because if we weren't such a great place to be, why is everybody coming home? So much love to Mark Lukashevitz and everybody that's that's come home. With that being said, we're going to take a step aside for a fast break on Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora. When we spin back around, we'll get you ready for Hour 2 in our Fantasy Football Mock Draft 2.0 right after this. Inside of the Cafe Kubal Studios. Avicoli's, located on the corner of Route 57 and Wetzel Road in Liverpool, New York, has been your trusted neighbor for decades. Located just steps from Liverpool High School, we're happy to have the Liverpool Warriors on-site, on-location broadcast at Avicoli's through Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora every single month, featuring student athletes, coaches, and administration throughout the year from Liverpool High School. Head out to Avicoli's today on the corner of Route 57 and Wetzel Road in Liverpool, New York, open Tuesday through Sunday for lunch, dinner, and drinks. We'd love to see you out there. And of course, you can call them at 315-622-5100 for takeout delivery and catering. That's 315-622-5100. And also find them on myavicolis.com. That's my A-V-I-C-O-L-L-I-S.com. Having peace of mind when you're out of town, that your furry loving friend is safe and sound, means taking them to Canine Campground. Because we all know that when it comes to the love of our pets, it goes well beyond the call of duty to make sure they're safe and sound. Right, Lily? <laughs> 
So take a ride to 242 Johnson Street in East Syracuse, New York, and see Canine Campground and where your dog will be staying, in the classic cabin, the executive cabin, the grand cabin, or of course, the luxury cabin, because if you know Lily, you know she loves luxury. <laughs> Now you don't have to wait to the last minute to find a family member or a friend that'll take your dog for a few days. Call K9 Campground at 315-299-4013. That's 315-299-4013. Their drop-off and pickup times are Monday through Sunday. Check K9Campground.com for more information. That's the letter K, the number 9, and campground spelled with a K, dot com. K9Campground.com. When you're going out of town, bring your dog to Canine Campground. PB&J's Lunchbox, the food truck that you love finding all throughout Central and Upstate New York, now has a street side cafe. So when you're craving their traditional favorites as well as their out-of-box amazing menu items, you can now head to 663 Old Liverpool Road in Liverpool, New York, located just minutes from the highway, the thruway, Destiny USA, and Onondaga Lake Parkway. PB&J's Lunchbox Street Side Cafe is there for you Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m., serving breakfast, lunch, and and dinner all throughout the day. Get breakfast for dinner, dinner for lunch, whatever you fancy, including their award-winning grilled peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Find them at 663 Old Liverpool Road in Liverpool, New York. PB&J's Lunchbox, where we love to know what's in your lunchbox. As a patient, what do we want? To be cared for to be listened to, and to have someone walk us through the process on our path to victory. Victory Sports Medicine and Orthopedics does all of those things beautifully, with Dr. Mark Petropoli leading the team on 791 West Genesee Street in Skinny Atlas, New York, located minutes from beautiful Skinny Atlas Lake. Whatever your injury may be from head to toe, preventative care, rehab, physical therapy, laser therapy, and surgery are all available at Victory Sports Medicine and Orthopedics, where they care about us, they listen to us, and they understand that everyone's path to victory is a little bit different. Let them help you on yours by calling 315-685-7544 to make your appointment today. That's 315-685-7544. And find out more information at victorysportsmedicine.com. Welcome back here to Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora inside of the Cafe Kubal Studios, hanging out with you where sports meets life. If you're watching us on Facebook and YouTube, we're going to end this video and start a new one as we do every Wednesday for fantasy football. So stay with us here on MixLR.com backslash Wake Up Call DT and on WakeUpCallDT.com as we shift gears over on Facebook and YouTube. And we'll be back momentarily inside the